page continued. 20. She was confused. Her face was livid with anger. To make her confusion worse, at that instant, Leela, whom she had left asleep on her bed, awoke with a shriek. Oh, you eater of your master, Leela, you have awakened, have you? The bane of my life. Now you will not let me rest or do anything. She put two pieces of double roti, English bread, in the fireplace to toast and was cutting a third. A moment had elapsed and the child was shrieking louder. Oh, be patient, you dead one. What has happened to you? May the witches come and devour you. What curse upon my upon your head makes you howl all day? Even though I've got I got you an amulet from the fakir. God, what will I do? When uh, when will I get some rest? I slog slog all day. I can't even get time to dress or to sit down with the neighbors for a chat or go to the shops. Last night I went to bed at two o'clock, washing and cleaning up. Even though I got you an amulet from the fakir. God, when will I get some rest? I slog, slog all day. I can't even get time to dress or to sit down with the neighbors for a chat or go to the shops last night. I went to bed at two o'clock, washing and cleaning up. And now, Sheila, Ni, dead one, go and page 21 and look at your after your little sister for a little while instead of running about the house and making a noise. Go. Prem had picked up the child and bringing her and Sheila to the sitting room where he lay, set about to amuse them by playing the gramophone. Munnu, who was who had almost finished rubbing the utensils, heard the music issuing from the sitting room and on the pretext of going out to wash the utensils at the pump, left the kitchen. Bibiji had burnt the toast as she had neglected it while shouting. She muttered curses as she set about cutting another piece of bread to toast before the fire on her skewers. The dolorous, D-O-L-O-R-O-U-S, dolorous rhythm of a love song filled the house for a minute or two. She forgot everything in the contemplation of whether she would be able to go to the funeral of Babu Beliram's mother that afternoon. Munnu had hurriedly washed the utensils and rushed into the house, not through the kitchen door but through the veranda into the sitting room. Oye, you son of an owl, said the Chota Babu. Have you dried your feet before entering the room? No, Babuji replied Munnu, standing with his wet feet on the carpet, the basket of utensils dripping under his arm. Well then, for goodness sake, please do so. On that mattress, said Chota Babu ironically. That's what it is there for, if I may be privileged to tell you. Munnu felt encouraged. The Chota Babu did not forbid me to come in any way, he thought. He felt emboldened. He wanted to hear the music to see and touch the singing machine, the like of which had fascinated him in the bazaar yesterday. How lucky I am, he thought, that there is a wonder machine in the house where I have come to serve. He rushed back to the kitchen to dump the basket of utensils so as to have his hands free. Then he went out on the pretext of throwing the rubbish and used uh, used ashes on the road. Unfortunately, just then the music stopped. What's your name? You can throw the ashes on the heap there, if you like, said a tall boy who was filling brass pitchers at the pump while two other younger boys sat watching. End of page 21. Now page 22. Munnu threw the ashes on the heap which the big boy had indicated. Are you also a servant here then? He asked directly. Yes, I work in the house of Babu Gopal Das, said the tall boy. He is bigger than your Babu. And the Babus of these two work in the court. We all come from Hoshiarpur. I come from near Kangra, said Munnu, and volunteered a whole lot of information about his uncle, about the most important men of his village, and about having been taken on a journey to Hoshiarpur by his, friend, by his parents 
when he was a little child and in a few seconds they had exchanged all their confidences in the manner characteristic of the naive open-hearted north indians in a, a hilarious tune suddenly attracted munnu back to the house he ran in your paws you monkey shouted the chota babu munnu fell on all fours over the mattress as if he were a real monkey and matched his good humor with his master's after dusting his feet and his hands he advanced still playing the fool and began to dance like the monkey of the village juggler whom he had seen perform every day on the crossroads on his way back from school look uncle look laughed sheila he is dancing like a monkey shabash shabash said the chota babu joining in the sport the, in the role of the juggler little leela had begun to keep time by swaying her head and clapping her hands i will be the bear uncle shouted sheila munnu was still wrapped dancing with awkward silly movements making faces showing his teeth rolling his eyes and shaking like a real monkey what's this noise what's this row going on gone going on what right has he to be in the sitting room bbg's voice came shrill and hard and chilled the atmosphere so that everything seemed still in a became still in a moment what right has he to join the laughter of his superiors munnu hurried to the kitchen but he was not crestfallen he was beaming all over his face with the wild happiness of expressive imp- uh, movement native to him the page uh, the uh, smoke from the fireplace spread over the kitchen and hid his end of page 22 now 23 flushed cheeks and bright eyes from bbg who still squatted on the straw mattress making toast otherwise there would have been a tired of abuse about his smiles a little less comfortable than the discretion upon duty with which he was greeted your place is in the kitchen you must not enter the sports uh, sports of the chota babu and the children you must get on quickly with your work in the house there is no time to lose babu ji has to go to the office at 10 o'clock shila has to go to school we have employed you not to delay the work in the house but to help to get it done since you are being paid a good wage more money than you ever saw in your whole life in the village more money in fact than your mother or father ever saw it would be worthwhile for you to do a little work for it and i warn you that you would you are never to go and settle down to receive your uh, relief yourself outside my house when the sweeper comes ask him to show you the servant's quarter uh, servant's latrine at the foot of the hill and your body is dirty and you keep touching it your clothes are filthy too i saw you wipe your hands on your shirt and oh i suppose you dried your body with your tunic after your bath god why didn't you ask me for a towel you brute you ought to, uh, you ought to be ashamed of yourself sheila sheila go my child get a towel out of the box and give it to this savage do you hear you are not to touch anything in this house without washing your hands now have you uh, now have you touched anything dirty since you had your bath no bbg said munnu still dancing in his mind and listening though not registering much of what bbg said all right but you scrubbed the utensils she said i washed my hands afterwards bbg munnu said didn't you touch anything else no he answered no didn't you what about the rubbish i washed my hands at the pump after i had thrown out the rubbish didn't you touch anything else no munnu lied exasperated and seeking to end this controversy though he knew he had brushed his hands on the mat while he was dancing the monkey dance and the mattress being used to dusty feet was certainly 
very unclean. Well then, take the tea to Chota Babuji. End of page 23, now page 24. Munnu did not know how to set about whether to carry the whole tray or the various things one by one. He had never handled anything like that at home and he thought it was best to make sure. How shall I carry them? He asked. How shall I carry them? She burst out. How shall you carry them? How long shall I have to go on explaining things to you? Hi, we didn't, uh, we didn't know that Dayaram was going to bring us such a thick-headed boy as this. We, Manu had pondered over the uh, array of white chalk utensils on the tray for a while. And before Bibiji had finished her new tirade, he uh, asked impetuously, I-M-P-T-U-O-U-S-L-Y, impetuously, What are these utensils made of, Bibiji? What impertinence, what cheek, to interrupt while I speak, I speak of China, of course. What else do you think they would be made of? Look, look, everyone, everyone, he has never seen China utensils and don't you let that let the tray fall and break the crockery now or I shall break your bones up for you. Munnu left the, lifted the tray lightly as soon as he heard his mistress answer his question and walked away with a wonderful agility while she abused and warned and threatened with the copious flow of her hard even chatter. Here we are children said Prem clapping his hands. Here is the tea. A bit late, but never mind. The tea, the tea, exclaimed, exclaimed Sheila, her blue eyes melting, her lips contracting. Oh, ah, I want the tea too, sobbed Leela from where she, uh, where she sat on a table, swaying her head to the music in a ridiculously childish fashion, which abused her, her elder sister, her uncle and her father. When at last worthy was not when that last worthy was not too embarrassed to come and play with his children. Put it down here, you black man, said Prem with mock anger in the wrong Hindustani, which he sometimes affected, especially in the face of anything so European as a tea tray when, uh, tea tray or when dressed in an English suit. An imitation of the tone in which Englishmen men talk to their native servants. Put it down on the table, black man. You may, uh, you who relieve yourself on the ground, bhool. Put it down on the table, black man. You, you who relieve yourself on the ground, Babuji. Come and have tea. Sheila was calling her father, who was still. Lay, uh, who still lay getting an extra wink of sleep in the bedlam of his three-roomed house. End of page 24. Now page 25. Why should he get up? Nagged BBG. Why should he get up? He wields an axe felling trees at the office all day. Baba Nathuram stirred himself with alacrity. A-L-A-C-R-I-T-Y. Pale, haggard and stooping, he walked into the steep, uh, sitting room with a weak smile of fear on his face. He was a henpecked husband and wanted to avoid avoid his wife first thing in the morning. Munnu had placed had placed the tray safely on a small table and retreated to the doorway. From there he stood watching the ritual which the Chota Babu performed rather self-consciously, pouring first milk first milk uh, from the long jug, then tea from the fat urn, fat pot with the beak like a pig's nose, adding sugar in cups that lay before him. Strange, he said to himself, what was the idea of pouring milk from one jug and tea from another, for at home his aunt boiled milk, tea leaves, sugar and water all in a big saucepan and poured it into brass tumblers ready for uh, everyone to drink and then what was done to the use uh, of the uh, burning that funny fat bread before eating it he had never seen english bread before in his life english bread is powder tea where is the cream where is the cream you little monkey 
आज छोटा बाबू ईगर एंड मैरी गो एंड गेट बीबीजी टू गिव यू सम बटर और क्रीम दिस दिस डिस्टर्ब मुन्नूज रिवियरी हेयर इज द क्रीम एंड द बटर सेट बीबी जी गिव इट टू देम सो दैट दे मे ईट एंड फैट एंड वाई लाइस लेव यू फोगॉट टू टेक इट मुन्नू कन्वेट द क्रीम टू द सिटिंग रूम इन अ फ्लैश देन ई स्टूड अगेन लुकिंग अराउंड as if attached by the attracted by the warmth that the chota babu deteriorated radiated bhool then he stood again looking round as if attracted by the warmth that the chota babu radiated the bada babu eyed him as as if with a yawn, yawn and a stretching of his arms he brought his lustreless skeleton to rest on the lotus seat like an emaciated beggar the chota babu seemed to do it all so easily biting the bread which he had smeared with butter and then taking a gulp or two of tea from the cup he held in his right hand the bada babu found it difficult apparently as he shifted about in his seat dropped the crumbs on himself and the carpet poured the contents of his tea cup into the saucer blew at the steaming liquid cautiously and sucked noisily as from time to time he wiped the bristles of his drooping mustache with his dirty yellow tongue come be you dead one where are you now shouted bibi ji presumably aroused at overhearing sheela asking her uncle if she end of page 25 Now page 26 could give Munnu some tea isn't there any more work to do here do you think that just because you have lifted a tray of tea things and taken it over to the next room you have earned your wages munnu withdrew to the kitchen rather sorry for himself as sheela's kind offer had touched him to the quick come and scrub these utensils with the ashes you idler not a speck of grease or dirt must remain on that she roared then as he applied himself to the task she cried oh god leave it leave it you are no good i will have to do it i must do everything myself nobody does anything satisfactorily can't you see you idiot that that black must come off just compare the sheen of those utensils which lie polished on the rack with those you have cleaned today you must get the same brilliance luckily for munnu there was a call from uh, for her from the sitting room who oh, i say the mother of my daughter said bada babu in the archaic convention of the indian family life bring another cup for babu ram lal has come and get some hot water ready for shaving sheela should be bathed and got ready for school Babu Ram Lal's daughters are almost ready to go. B- uh, BBG took an extra cup on and saucer from the shelf to the sitting room with a coyness that contradicted the high-pitched tone of her immodest voice and hardened exterior. Munnu enjoyed a little less attention from her for a while as when she came back with Sheila and Leela from the sitting room she sent him off with the hot water. with which the babus wanted and engaged herself in the in bathing her daughters and dressing them what an awful bitch of a woman he thought he had been wait- waiting an excuse to go out from the kitchen to the sitting room for that was a much nicer world the world where tea was being drunk by the jocular chota babu where the queer looking bada babu was and where He had now heard another babu had arrived. He was rewarded not only with the sight of an amiable little man who was reciting Punjabi verses, such as he had heard the professional clowns recite in his village, but by far the more amazing spectacle of the chota babu soaping his cheeks and rubbing the teeth of uh, teeth of a bright steel machine. What was the babu doing? He wondered. Then his mind went back to the barber's shop in his village and he understood shaving he said half audibly and he stood and st- stared at the process end of page 26 now page 
of all the most marvelous the most mysterious things he had seen since he came to town yesterday the little machine with the teeth seemed the most marvelous the most wonderful in his village the barber shaved the beards of the men with a long sharp razor this machine he had never seen it cannot be very dangerous he thought if the babu is rubbing it on his face so quickly up and down down and up what are you looking at you owl said the chota babu affectionately noticing that the boy stood absorbed this spectacle had aroused his curiosity too the first time he had seen it munnu smiled slightly embarrassed babu ji he ventured after a little while does this machine cost a lot of money why said bada bada babu with an attempt at light hearted irony why do you want to shave the hair on your head off have you become an orphan i am an orphan babu ji said munnu self pityingly oh said the visitor humorously you haven't yet risen to the height of my little finger and you want to possess a razor to shave with all right said the chota babu in his naturally bantering manner if you will be a good enough, if you will be good enough to go and get me a towel from the other room i shall give you not a machine but a blade to cut your throat with if you like munnu ran back for the towel his heart beating in admiration and love for the chota babu he could feel a kinship with this light hearted man when he was he came back he was confronted with the sight of yet another miracle which this time the bada babu was performing revolving a small handle on the side of a shining egg machine egg shaped machine he stared hard trying to comprehend what was happening and before he could muster enough courage to ask the dry pale man what he was doing his mind went back to the piece of lathe on which the barber in his village used to sharpen his long razors this he said impetuously to the babus to share with them the joy of its discovery this is surely a sharpening machine we you eater of your masters came babi's bark and he knew that he had heard him talking to the babus where have you end of page 27 now page 28 flown to is there no work to do that you go wasting your time haven't i told you that your place is in the kitchen won't won't it sink into your brain or do you want your bones broken before you understand i have all the work to do this witch has to go to school and the babu ji is going to the, uh, going soon to the office i don't suppose you have even learned to make dough in the hills where you come from besides your hands are dirty i will never let you touch any of the food in the house i must do it all no use depend on, on you what shall i do now bibi ji be don't eat my head she yelped again isn't there anything to do before you are you blind or what look at those utensils tea things which want cleaning vegetables to be peeled munnu got down to the job of cleaning the tea set he found that as soon as he poured water on the white chalk the utensils became clean that is easy he thought and he hurriedly washed some cups and set them apart to dry we what are you doing she barked more sharply rub that china with the ashes exactly as we do the brass utensils and clean them thoroughly so that not a speck of dust dirt or the taint of anyone's mouth remains we are not so debased as the sahibs that we should eat and drink out of our dirty utensils after merely washing them we may have to respect them because they are our officers but they are dirty they bathe in tubs in the dirty water that comes from their bodies they bathe in tubs in the dirty water that comes off their bodies lying there all the time even after they have rubbed themselves with soap and washed off the dirt the ayah of the maim of the bank sahib told me that they eat the flesh of cows like the mohammedans and of pigs like the sikhs i also eat the flesh of cows and pigs you know said prem teasingly as he wandered into the kitchen to see if the slab of stone in the corner 
was unoccupied and he could have his bath. Oh, don't you say that, please. You make me feel sick, appealed Bibi Ji. Really? Munu sat there rubbing the utensils with ashes and washing them quickly and with not too fastidious a care for the corners and depths of the pot. He was essentially impetuous by nature and as yet too young to have disciplined his hands to the adequate performance of menial jobs. At home his aunt, in spite of her dark brooding hatred of him, this is page number 29, had done the housework herself untiringly, uncomplainingly and quietly. He remain, remembered that he had often volunteered in a rush of sympathy to sweep the floor, to treat it with antiseptic cow dung and to run errands for her. The only quarrel between her, between himself and his aunt, he realized, was that she could not have children and people shamed her for her barrenness. Otherwise, he remembered how often she had taken him in her arms and kissed him and how often he had gone to sleep, sleep embracing her. But this woman seemed to hate him for nothing. As he wiped the utensils with the dirty cloth, he hoped that she would stop nagging one day and that he would settle down and not feel so much of an outsider in the house. The Chota Babu was nice and the children were amused by his monkey dance. The Bada Babu was all right because one could avert one's eyes from him. But Bibiji, he checked his mind from running into a violent criticism of her because he felt if he abused her, she might somehow come to know of his thoughts and take him to task for it. He switched his mind off to the contemplation of the fine, well-cut silk clothes he had seen hanging in a corner of the sitting room, clothes like those which the Sahib wore, whom he had seen yesterday. He felt he would like to see the Chota Babu putting them on. But as he got up to go to meet the Chota Babu coming towards him, Has your highness finished working on the slab and is it free for me to take a bath on? He asked with an air of humorous subservience. Yes, Babuji, Munnu answered. I, but as this, at this, Bibiji descended on him like lightning. Finished washing the utensils? She snapped. Well, where are you going then? What do you want in the other room? I, Munnu restrained to intervene, invent an excuse. Bhul. I, Munnu strained to invent an excuse. You are going to tell me a lie, she said, threatening to strike him with her fist. Go and put those utensils away. The babus want to take their baths, peel the vegetables and clean up there. Haven't I told you that you are not to go into the other room unless you are wanted? When they have all gone, you can clean the carpet and make the beds. I don't know whether you know how to do these things. I suppose I'll have to show you. But meanwhile, there is work to do here in the kitchen. All that you seem to want to do is end of page 29, now page 30. Run around, you, you inquisitive little fool. You have never seen anything in your life in the hills and now your eyes are bursting at the sight of all the beautiful things in our home. The flood has started, said Prem, throwing jugfuls of water on his head. Look out, you fool, you will be submerged, not only in the ocean of words but in the sea of water. Munnu suppressed a smile at the good humour of the Chota Babu but muttered a curse as he recollected Bibiji's stream of words. She went to give Sheila some pocket money as the child stood ready to go to school, else she might have caught him doing something wrong. She now, he now believed she could always find something to abuse him for. Some fault, the slightest detail, the way he placed a pot, the manner in which he handled the broom or the way he held the potatoes as he peeled them. During the brief respite, his mind wandered from the Chota Babu's beautiful white body, glistening with water, to the clothes that would adorn it soon, He wonderful, the wonderfully silk, cut silk clothes. And suddenly, as if out of the blue, a picture of the boots, the Bada Babu's, Bada Babu's black boots came before him, with their gloss and their intricately tied laces. 
he wondered if the chota babu had also boots like that sheela inni sheela a young voice disturbed his cog, uh, cog, cogitation from outside c o g i t a t i o n cogitation from outside yes coming still sheela from the bedroom a young girl with a fine wheat colored face framed modestly but prettily in a pink muslin head cloth looked in through the kitchen door sheela's mother she called and then uttered a sudden oh at the sight of munnu why ni with uh, which with long hair and crooked feet why are you running away teased the chota babu as he went to the sitting room kaushalya ni kaushalya called bibi ji after her don't be afraid of this rustic my little sister the eater of his masters is really harmless you don't know what he did this morning he went and relieved himself on the wall outside there now she lies ready do take her and look after her won't you my child isn't he funny the servant of yours remarked kaushalya looking in again my babu ji told me he dances like a monkey end of page 30 now page 31 Sheila quick my sisters are waiting and will be late for school Munnu felt humiliated he did not know how to face people if they were going to be told that he had, what he had done this morning he realized finally his position in this world he was to be a slave a servant who should do the work all the odd jobs someone to be abused even beaten though as yet it had not come to that he felt very lonely and sad the sudden emergence of the chota babu immaculately dressed in a tasar jacket and a smartly creased trousers a flannel hat on his head and a pair of beautiful brown shoes on his feet excited him he loved this man admired him as his hero he wanted to be like him where is bibi ji oh devil without horns queried the chota babu Munnu smiled embarrassed but happy here i am she said coming out from the uh, coming in from the outer door now what do you want five of those wonderful silver rupees of which my brother earns 150 every month from the imperial bank of india prem mocked i am going to see a patient at the other end of the town and it is good tactics to have plenty of money jingling in your pockets because the world believes you are well off and they bring you all their diseased relatives to cure money you see attracts money she relaxed her face her hard face to return the twinkle in his eye as she left the room however she gave a stern glance to munnu a stern glance to munnu as if to forbid him from following her course to the cash box where she hid the family wealth this she felt did not have the effect she intended she saw him peeping towards the corner where she had retreated she shuffled and shifted to camouflage the movement of her key in the lock of the cash box you thief she shouted do your work and don't follow me about with your gaze munnu was disgusted with her insinuations i n s i n u a t i o n s he went on peeling the vegetables then he heard the chota babu slam the door of the sitting room and walk out with his elder brother go and sweep the rooms now and do the beds bbg said end of page 31 now page 32 a little more calmly as she came back i will put the vegetables on the cook and on to cook and knead the flour into dough for the chapatis he lost himself in the fairy land of the sitting room as squatting on his heels he swept the carpet with the broom his eyes caressed the mahogany varnish of the throne like chairs they dwelt with admiration on the various photographs twice or thrice he could not resist the temptation to get up and look closely at the pictures he scrutinized everything with wonder and love tracing the colors the shapes and the sizes of all the things inquiring into their meanings what is written in that book i wonder he asked himself how does the big clock work 
the voice in the box i wonder how it arises don't you wake up leela uh, bbg called as she heard him push a chair i'll come and help you do the bed she came she had quieted a bit though she abused him for being too quick in getting through things after the rooms were done she asked him to go and fill the pitchers at the pump Later he sat down to learn to cook under her orders. His uncle came to fetch the midday meal from for Babuji and from and for Sheila and asked him, "Do you like it here?" He could have cried at that, but Babuji was there, so he answered, "Yes, I like it very much." But when Dayaram asked Babuji's permission to take him along to show him the way to Sheila's school so that he could go and meet her every day, he burst out weeping on the way and complained about the hard bitter life which he had had since he arrived especially about bbg's continual la- nagging you are their servant said daya ram you must not mind what they say you must grow up and work you will have uh, you have had too easy and life at home Your mother spoiled you. Your aunt was too kind to you. Munnu suffered this, but out in the open, his wild, strong, strong wild self came back to him with the contagion of the elements, and he would have it, and he could have hit his uncle. On his return, Bibiji gave him two chapatis and a spoonful of lentils and vegetables. He had to eat. on his hands being considered too low in status to be allowed to eat of the utensils the insult stung him he could hardly swallow his food pa- end of page number 32 now page number 33 but it was no use caring he felt now bbg went out visiting some neighbors taking leela with her after the midday meal munnu began to scrub the utensils again before he had finished the afternoon was over he perspired with the heat and work he felt tired and lay down but sheila came back with the tall girl kaushalya who had looked in the uh, who had looked in the morning looked in in the morning and the two girls uh, and the two other little girls they all began dancing in the sitting room munnu would like to have joined them too but He rushed in and began to perform the morning's monkey dance. This amused them, and they let him play with them. Though they had begun to uh, begin by pushing him away, saying, "You are a servant; you must not play with us." The chota babu came back with some other babus and demanded tea. Bbg was called. Munnu's spirits revived in the atmosphere created by the chota babu's jollity. His uh, mouth watered at the sight of the rasgullas. the gulab jamuns and the strange english sweets which the chota babu had brought he gave him a portion on a plate to eat munnu's heart went out to him he answered every little gesture of command with the alacrity with which the little boys in the village used to do things for him he felt sorry when the chota uh, chota babu went away for a walk bbg began to nag again to a duck thus as if she had been accumulating her breath all the afternoon he was grinding the spices on a in a stone mortar with the with the wooden pestle and he spilled some juice over on account of the excessive energy with which he put in the art of grinding a storm of anger threw punish a storm of anger blew forth he did not wash his hands before he handled the saucepan a hurricane of abuse rained down he sat back tired after doing all the preliminary work for the cooking of the evening meal and his eyes closed in, sh- in sleep a very typhoon a very typhoon burst over his head but he was too deeply drowned in the oblivion of sleep to mind being lashed by a furious tongue of uh, dung or being dug in the ribs life in baburam's babu's house soon resolved itself for munnu into the routine of domestic slavery end of page 33 beginning of page 34